We find ourselves today somewhere we were earlier on in the series. In the second leg, at home, in a continental competition, taking on Olympia from Honduras. Except, this time, the prize we are vying for is a berth in the CONCACAF Champions Cup semi-final. And welcome back, everyone, to episode number 60 of The American Dream. I'm Mr. Cellophane. If you've enjoyed the series so far, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, please, and thank you. We have a massive episode today. We've taken this team to heights hitherto unseen in this save. A shot at making the semifinals of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. We are down 1-0 on aggregate. The same spot we were just a couple of months ago in the Central American Cup against the very same team. But we are stronger and we are hungrier this time around. Plus, we have a small matter of a match in the league against Cartagena. It is a massive top-of-the-table six-pointer. Since we were last together, we took on Liberia in the league at home, and we opened up the scoring. Willem Getz throwing it back post, finding Vitan Tusha playing striker in this match in the 50th minute to take a 1-0 lead. Then some unfortunate defense happened. Camargo all alone able to slide it past Conte. He tied it up at one. Three points that I felt we desperately needed. A very evenly played match. Just one shot on goal separating the two. Just one shot on target separating the two. Just point O two XG separating the two. If you didn't look at the possession numbers, you would have gone. Anyone could have won. Luckily for us, or unluckily, depending on which way you want to look at it, we did have a game in hand on Cartagena. So we now sit on top of the table after 18 matches on 38 points. They've got 37. If they beat us, they will leapfrog us back into the top spot. If we beat them, we are all but assured with three matches left to play, of course, the top seed in the closing stage, which would get us through to the grand final, as we all know, which is the board objective for us to win the whole thing. Should we lose, it's a hole we may have a little bit of difficulty getting out of. But again, that's a problem for another day. We've got the semifinals on our mind. Here is the lineup. It's Conte, Bacar, Innocente, Duarte, and Cordero with Aquista and Castro in the midfield. Our front four gets Lopez, Vitantusha, and Juan Diego Sequeria. For the second time this year, we trail 1-0 heading into the home leg of a continental competition against Olympia. Last time... We drew at home, so we ended up not winning, and Olympia went on to win the entire competition. That is how they got into the round of 16 in the first place. We're here in the quarterfinals. A semifinal berth is on the line, and Zaprisa getting the first shot of the match, firing that first salvo across the bow. Ball cleared away. Gets looking to move it forward as it comes deep. Ahead for Andre Castro. Aquista back for Castro. Nice one, two. Ahead, Lopez. Knocked off of his feet. Tusha comes away with it. His shot's going to be blocked. And Sekari is going to just let that roll out for a Saprisa corner. Olympia with a corner opportunity of their own in the 16th minute. Into the middle. Save made by Conte. Matute on the back post. His second goal of the year, if it stands... We're peeling for offside. VAR is going to check and confirm, and they have decided it is a good goal. And we fall down to 1-0 on the night, 2-0 on aggregate. And I think that that was a bad call. But then again, I'm not the referee. Sekaria. Two men around him. Lopez popping it in the air, looking for Getz. Palacios can't clear it. Getz back into the middle. Tusha. Out for Castro. Bakar Akista gets with a drive and it will ricochet off of the crossbar and go out into the stands. Six to four. Your shots on goal. Olympia has found the target all four times. We have not. Well, until just now. I love when those numbers update while I'm talking. Innocente in control across for Duarte. Andre Castro. Flipping it forward, looking to get it behind the defense. Gets, chests it down, into the middle. Tusha, his shot blocked. Lopez, his shot blocked. Mohamed will clear it out. Sekaria is there. Can he recycle it? Castro, toward the edge of the box. Sekaria, in the middle. Lopez, another blocked shot for Olympia. But Gets was in an offside position, so it will not be a Saprisa corner. 45 minutes in the books, and this is our nightmare scenario. We have made it this far. 
can we take it a little bit further? We're trying to pump up the team as much as we can. No changes are going to be made just yet, although Willem Getz is on my list of players who may not make it deep into this second half. Muhammad with a final third throw-in for the Honduran side. Matute in control, flipping it back post. Finds his man, but he can't find the target. Just couldn't get over that one enough to make Conte make a save. 55 minutes have elapsed. Palacios, another corner. Conte will grab it out of the air, and Saprisa will look to move it forward. Taking the, our time to allow the team to get set up, rolled out to Innocenti. Near side, Bacar. The Tunisian international, Akista. Lopez quickly ahead for Tusha, finds Willem, gets in space, in the alley, gets, moving it to his right foot, shooting, and Castillo will redirect that behind for a Saprisa corner kick. Gets coming on a little bit here in this second half. He's going to line up for the corner. Look to send it in, hoping for a little more success than last time. Unfortunately, it's not to be. Can Akista move it back up quickly? He can. Looking for Getz. Headed back, Cordero, Sequeira. Lopez turns and clanks it off of the woodwork again. At the hour mark, we have decided to make a change. It's not taking effect yet. Willem Getz is coming out. William Rodriguez is going to be taking his spot on the left side. We have gone more attacking in this match. We have to get... Two goals at the very least to force extra time and potentially penalties. Three would give us the win. Conte playing it back out. Duarte with a lot of room in the Saprisa end. Castro quickly to set Sequeria over for Tusha. He'll shoot and score. 23rd goal of the year for Vitan Tusha to tie this one up at one, except VAR is looking at this one. Will he be deemed offside? Yes. We just cannot seem to solve this Olympia team at home. We are out shooting them 15 to 8. Our XG is astronomical. We just have not taken advantage of the opportunities that we have been granted. Agron getting in front of that one, but Sekaria will get it back. Castro feeds Tusha. This time he's on side. He hits the frame of the goal. And are you kidding me? William Ramirez unable to put it on the empty net. Sequeria will come off. Jose Pablo Espinoza is on. Andre Castro will make way for Diego Moreira. Steven Aquista for Alejandro Braun. They are going to swap places. So we've completely altered our midfield. And we are going to try to press our advantage as much as humanly possible. In fact, we are not even going to, we're going to take some of these instructions off. We're going to go more direct, be more expressive. We're going to put up a high line. We're doing everything that we possibly can in order to try to achieve success in this match. But I don't know if we are going to have the time because just five minutes remain in this match. And it looks like the quarterfinals is as far as we are going to get. It's... Better than we've done in the past. Marrera with the corner. Headed away. Tusha getting it back. Marrera looking back post. Exarete clears it. Played back up. Ramirez looking for Alejandro Braun. And he can't find the target. And the full time whistle having blown. Even though we played a heck of a match. In the end we fall 1-0 on the night. 2-0 on aggregate. Olympia is moving on, and we are waiting for next year. But qualifying for the Continental Cup next year is not a foregone conclusion. First, we have to get into the Central American Cup. The only way that we can absolutely guarantee that to happen is to win the closing stage. To do that, we have to win the Grand Final. To get into the Grand Final guaranteed, well, we need to beat Cartagena today. Conte is going to be in goal. A couple of minor changes. Bacar Innocente still in their same positions. Barantes is coming back into the starting lineup. Duarte is going to slide over to the right-hand side. Aquista and Castro are going to remain in the midfield. It will be Tusha on the left wing this time. Secaria staying on the right. Diego Moreira coming back in at the 10, and Edward Lopez will slide up as today's striker. And we know how absolutely imperative it is that we secure a victory today. A win puts us four points ahead of Cartagena with three matches left to go before the playoffs. 
We are pretty much guaranteed a spot in the playoffs. If you look to the overall table, we are far and away the best team over the course of the entire season here in Costa Rica. We just need to prove it in this half. These 22 games have been massive. We are up by one point after 18. Will we make it four after 19? That is the story. We are either going to be up four or down two. That's the way these things work. And both teams off to a pretty cagey start here in the first 25 minutes, although a blast off of the woodwork for Cartagena. They're going to look to recycle it in. Solis playing it back for Raidson. In control near the midfield stripe. Valencia up to Alfaro. Feeding it through to Montero. He'll put it past Conte Luis Montero with his ninth goal of the year. And Cartagena takes the first half lead. We're going to demand more from our team because we cannot allow that much pressure in this game. The stakes are just too high. Barantes looking to send in the corner in the 30th minute. Duarte can't get his head on it. Marrero, though, collects it. Plays it across. Lopez with a drive and he just misses it wide. Both teams asking some very pointed questions of the opponent's defense in this match. Cartagena the only one so far to find an answer. Ball sent long. Tush is going to win the header, but Munguia is going to step in front of that. He's got a man in the middle. Can he find him? He does. It's Casada, and it's tipped wide. Innocente throwing himself in front of it to earn a corner for Cartagena, which will be taken by Montero, who has been very dangerous in this match. Sent into the middle. Solis with the drive on. Conte, a massive save, and they will reset and try again. Montero once more from the near corner delivering it in near post this time Solis not quite so much on target he puts that one wide and we remain one nil Cartagena as we hit the end of the first 45 minutes Luis Montero's goal is the only difference in this one and he's hoping that it is going to be enough to see Cartagena retake the top spot on the table after the match, we'll look ahead at the schedule, see who has the easier run, and hopefully we will be ahead by the four points we were talking about. At the very least, let's get one back and maintain that one-point lead. Secaria playing it in for Marrera. Heavy touch, cleared away. Casada nodding it down straight to Alfaro. Up to the right, Montero with space. Montero, edge of the box. Casada with the drive, and he's going to miss. Very, very lucky on that one is Conte. Sprays it out to the near side, Duarte. Up for Secaria. Marrera. Three men surrounding him, so he'll drop it back to the safety of his back line. Barantes with it. Up ahead, Andre Castro. Right wing feed. Secaria. Nice touch past his man. Throwing it far post. Tusha with the drive, and it's in. Just getting it under the crossbar is Vitan Tusha, and we are tied at one. Okay, maybe I wouldn't necessarily classify that header as a drive, but it had the force on it that we needed for him to get it over the hands of Ruaba and into the back of the net. It's about 20 minutes left to go. Still no changes have been made. Barantes sending it in. Innocente can't win the header. It's cleared. Marrera's got it. And that's a drive. 17th goal of the season for Diego Marrera. It's 2-1 Saprisa. And for the restart, we are going to make some alterations to our lineup as Esteban Cordero is going to come in at striker. Andre Castro on a yellow card makes me a little bit Nervous, So we are going to get Hugo Cordero into the match. He will slide back, take the place of Randy Duarte, who will swap spots with Carlos Barantes. So Barantes is going to move up into that defensive midfield position. And hopefully these changes that we have made are going to help us hang on to this slim one goal lead. Just five minutes remaining. We're out shooting Cartagena's 15 to 12. Four minutes have been added on by the fourth official. I think we're going to get through without another highlight. And I do so love when I am right. Luis Montero opened the scoring in the 27th minute, but the second half belonged to Saprisa. Goals from Vitan Tusha and Diego Moreira. And our lead is now four. Just what we needed as we take a look at our run in three matches remaining. We've got Perez Zeladon at home, San Carlos on the road, and then a match against Santos at home, a team that always plays us very tough. Cartagena, meanwhile, has a bit of a tougher road. Herediano away, Grezia at home, although we struggled against them on our pitch, and they end up the season on the road at Punta Reynas, who, if they are not careful, could overtake them for second place. Both teams currently sitting 
on 37 points. We're going to see where we end up for the playoffs in tomorrow's episode as we bring you the final match of the season. I hope to see you there. If you've enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new or if you just haven't done so already. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Our subscriber base is growing. I thank you, thank you, thank you. I look forward to seeing everybody back here tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.